I wouldn't even argue with that. I don't know. I, it's it's a little tough for me to say. Like, I really got to sit down and fucking, you know, comb the archives in my mind. and really I really like which 95. Ones. 95 was good. Who, was, uh, who won in 95? Who was in Sean. Sean. Of course, of course. Sean. Sean Michaels marks <laughs> over but, here. Of course. But, <laughs> but I, 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 but the I did, match I, was I, good, man. But Ric Flair is Ric I, I Sean did like ninety nine. I did like ninety nine personally. Vince McMahon. Yeah, Wait, Vince, Vince won, won the Rumble. Oh, geez, I yeah. forgot about that. And I don't know. The the ninety seven one was okay, but it was like. I think the nineties were were iffy, yeah. man. It was iffy. Like bro. like I the ninety seven. Liked... I, I didn't like it because Steve didn't get the title shot. You know what I'm saying? And him and Brett ended up having a fucking classic, but. I don't know, but what, but then ninety eight was great. Ninety eight, like what was Steve the one was they had just a double, They had a double winner. Which one was that? What was ninety four. That was Luger? yeah. That was ninety four. Luger. That was Brett. a good one. Yeah, yeah. That they was had a they one. had a string of good Royal Rumbles. Like they had a string of them. Yeah, I don't remember who won ninety three though. The early ones, I, I I think were not as good, only because the stakes weren't as high. And I think once they implemented that title shot into it, mm-hmm. I think like that's when it really. It really, really started to fucking kick off and become more popular yeah. and a bigger deal. Now it's a fucking event. I mean, this shit's on par with WrestleMania. How, how, did you, how did you guys feel when they brought in WCW and ECW into the Royal Rumble? I mean, those guys all just came in. You had, you had to pick of the litter. I mean, I was good with it because no guy, none of those guys have ever won. Yeah, I, I, w- I wasn't mad about it, uh, but in retrospect, I think that whole invasion angle could have been oh, maybe whack. done a little bit better. It is well, they didn't I, have I, one of the top guys. And and look, I don't I don't want to be one of those fucking guys that's like, well, you know, this could have been booked better or whatever. Like, no, I'm not I'm not going to be one of those dickheads. But mm-hmm. in terms of like what my expectations were considering the rosters that were available, uh the potential that was available, mm-hmm. uh I think a big part of it was harmed by the fact that you couldn't get Sting, you couldn't get Flair, you couldn't get Hogan the NWO Goldberg, those guys early on because of their Time Warner contracts. And then once they became available, they had already kind of done the invasion angle. But how the fuck are you going to do the invasion angle without those guys? Because those guys were like, you know, WCW in the eyes of the fans. Yeah. So I think because of that, the the expectation and the result, you know, it didn't really live up to the expectation. The result, you know, the result, it was very underwhelming. Very it was lacking. good. Yeah. It produced very some lacking. good matches. Don't get me wrong. But, but the eh. most memorable matches are with WWE guys. You know what I mean? The most memorable yeah. matches like SummerSlam, you have Rock versus Booker T. You have uh, Kurt Angle well, versus Booker T. R- you know RBD what, Jeff, Jeff, Hardy. Jeff Hardy. Yeah, yeah, that was good. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was good. I mean, but but even even like the stalker thing, like, you know, and then Booker oh. T coming out in the main event, you know, at that King of the Ring. I was at that King of the Ring where it was Benoit, Jericho, and Steve in the main event for the title, and mm-hmm. fucking Booker T came out. And it was like, yo, how much cooler would this have been if it was like Hogan? Or how much cooler would this have been if this was Sting or Flair, yeah. you know, yeah. or Scott Hall or Kevin Nash, like one of those guys. And then again, like when you got the NWO, it was just it was, very, it was no, cool. It was cool. Yeah. NWO was, it was, cool. It was watered down when he introduced. Yeah. that was the best. But part. it still let it still led to big business, though. You can't you can't say that because you had Rocky and you had Hogan and anything that Hogan did during that time. That was big shit for them, man. They're now, how did you money. how did you guys act, bro? Because I know I was jumping and I was fucking. We were high as hell at my boy's house, and I kept saying like Hogan's coming back. Holding, he's like, ah, shut the fuck up. And then when Vince did that promo, he turned the chair around and said NWO. How are you guys? How did you guys react to that? I, I was jumping I, out of my. I was jumping out of my chair. I just wanted Hall back. That's what it yeah, was. I, I it was all about it. Hall for me. I dug it because I wanted to see Hogan versus Austin. Like I wanted yeah, to see that. I, I wanted to see that. And I wanted to see Scott Hall back because I felt like Scott Hall and Nash were both guys that needed to come back. You know, why, what I'm saying? why do you think they didn't do uh Hogan versus uh Austin? There's um, a lot of reasons. And and we went, it went rock versus talk Hogan. about it. We don't Ego. really know. Yeah. Ego. You know, they can just didn't want to put him over. Yeah. I mean, Hulk didn't want to put him over. And, and to be quite honest, I don't know. He understand put over the why. rock though. What do you put over the rock? Yeah, but well, the Rock gave it, it back to him the next the next month, and, and and the perception of the Rock too was that like the Rock wasn't on par with Austin already, because mm, you know okay. I mean I I think back in that time Austin was the top dog, and look they're both great superstars. I'm not taking anything away from the Rock, but yeah. again the perception of the fans at the time was that Steve was the top dog. Mm-mm. You know, uh, Steve was Steve was Hogan and Rocky was Macho Man. That's basically yeah. what, that's basically what the best way to say it. Okay, and 
I think that Hogan just didn't want to do business for him. And, and that's fucked up, man, because Steve deserved it. And regardless of that fact, Steve star is still bigger than Hogan's in my opinion, yeah. Steve and, and the more people I think ever. like him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, even now, man, you talk about yeah. the, you, you mentioned all the time about the NWO shirts. So like, dude, people still rock Austin 316 shirts today. Yeah, dude. I mean, like my kids, you know, they have posters and stuff up in their room. And one of the posters that they asked me to put up was a Stone Cold Steve Austin one. Really? Over over NWO? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. They got a Steve Austin poster on their door. No bullshit. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Because there was just there was just something great about the character. I think it connected with people. And, you know, it, it's I, I think a lot of it is 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 the beating up your boss thing. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of people <laughs> are beat up their fucking bosses. But I also think that a lot of it is just Steve's natural charisma, his swagger, yeah. his walk, the way he presents himself. Because, you know, before somebody opens up their fucking mouth or cuts a promo, you're going to see them. You know what I'm saying? And when you saw Steve, you saw the intensity, you saw the realism, you saw something there. And it was just it was very, very captivating. And then just I I, I think really his whole the way he kind of came in, he wasn't a star right out of the gate. Yeah. And then he becomes organically this mid card guy that starts kind of climbing up the ranks as a heel. It becomes a little despicable. And then all of a sudden he works with Bret Hart and it just yeah. goes somewhere else, you know? And it, I mean, that was it. That was it, bro. I mean, think about all the iconic images you have of this guy, you know, it, it's crazy. Yeah. But I would, I mean, I would figure like, like NW was more swag or more cool. Like, wow, wow. Like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm the, yeah. It. Yeah, no, no. I mean, that's cool, too. But I just think yeah. that little kids instinctually always want to like the best guy. And they want to yeah. kick ass. They don't want to look know? cool. They want to kick ass. Uh. Yeah, yeah. All little kids instinctually want to like the best guy. Whoever's the best guy, that's their guy, you know? And I think mm-hmm. that, you know, that's so you're, so you're saying so you're saying Steve Austin is the Tony Hawk of wrestling. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I guess if we're going to say baseball terms, maybe he might be like, you know, Barry Bonds. You know, uh, and Hogan's Babe Ruth, you know, ah, like really it's kind of like that. Like, you know, you wouldn't have this guy if it wasn't for that guy. You sure know? as hell is no Kenny Omega, right? <laughs> I feel for Kenny. I feel for Kenny. Mm-hmm. Mach, you're, you're a fan of Kenny. We were talking about mm-hmm. it not that long ago that, that yeah. the Kenny that that we like, the Kenny that that drew us in. It's been a while since we've seen that Kenny. Been a while. In in so many in so many aspects, like he doesn't even cut promos. Like the way he used to, like his promos in Japan were nice. Whether he was doing it in Japanese, does or he do that gunshot shit still? Yeah, he still does that, especially yeah. when he does the B trigger. But he's not the same guy. I remember when Pat was like, "He's the greatest. He's the best in the world." At one time, and I was like, yeah. "Oh fuck, all right." And then all yeah. of a sudden, he just went to AEW, and it's like, "Ah, Brian Danielson, all the way." Well, yeah, no well yeah. I, I think it was just a matter of Danielson coming back. And, and I had always said that, like, Omega was the guy in like 2017, 2018. I would say Kenny Omega was the guy. And but I always mm-hmm. I always held out that when Brian Danielson comes back, he's the best. And actively, mm-hmm. Brian Danielson is the best. Yeah, I don't Sorry. know how the hell you I don't know how you like, figure that one out. I Ro- really Ro- Roman's thought. Roman's up there. Roman's up there. But in terms of like a workhorse, like worker wrestler, mm-hmm. like the guy that you need to get this person to where they got to get to. Danielson. That's I mean, but just just, yeah. just the reason why, just because he came back out of that, you know, like they like they were just like shelved him like you're done. You're done, bro. Well, and they this- didn't want to take the risk, I think. And, and, and again, it's there's there's a lot of legalities involved. I mean, bro, think about it. Owen Hart, Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero. I mean, like all these mm. things that happened, you know, you don't want Brian Danielson's name to be on that list, you know? Yeah. So I understand why these companies take these risks. And I understand that sometimes you kind of have to cut off the performer for their own good so that they don't do these things so that they don't, so that they don't make their lives worse. Mm. But, you know, he's a very intelligent guy. And I think that he's a guy who figured out a way to naturally heal himself. And obviously with all these breakthroughs in medicine that we have every other day, yeah, it's 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 pretty it's pretty believable that he was going to do it. So. I don't get a guess me this. You guys, you guys, you guys are ring workers and you guys are generals in the ring, bro. I'm just a fucking spectator <laughs> out here. I'm just a all fucking right. Young. All right, man. Like, let's <laughs> yeah, let's 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 settle down. I think we're, we're, we're also both very humble and very fucking modest. OK, yeah. but you got you got edge. Brian Danielson came back and they were fucking same style whopping away. Right. But then you got mm-hmm. somebody like Paige comes back and they, they're carrying her. Why can't she or Austin? 
Why she's can't not she ready come to be back, back like that? They those guys work their ass off. Edge was away from the business for eleven years. He worked his ass off to get back. Brian Danielson did everything. And you even see it. He talks about it in his uh I think it was the Jericho podcast, where he talks about if I ever got a chance to work Brock Lesnar, I was gonna work like this crouching style, like from the ground. If you go back and watch that Survivor series match, he does a little bit of that style in the ring to protect himself from Lesnar's like the way he throws him around. Paige yeah. came back and thought she could be Paige without doing all the work outside. She came back. It wasn't fit for in-ring performance. So she she, so she like didn't do model. anything like these guys. She didn't do nothing. No, no kind of like, you know, neck work, weight training to get your muscle and your strength, but she didn't do shit then. Yeah. I mean, oh, I, man, I have Jimmy. no clue. I have no clue as, as to what, um, as to what her 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 training entailed and her preparation entailed, but I know that Danielson was like in hyperbaric chambers because his his issues were more concussion based. Yeah. And I think that once he was able to get himself to a point where he was able to run the ropes, to wrestle, to do all those little things, then he was going to be okay. And you know, I mean, dude, like this is a guy who's very very intelligent, man. Like he's mm. he studied so many different things. He understands his body well. He understands his nutrition. He gets what there is to do. I mean, you look at him and you look at, you know, other guys from his era. He doesn't look fucking washed like all of them. Does he look yeah. a little older in the face? Maybe, yeah. But, I mean, he doesn't oh, he's look got washed. Two, he's got two kids. You can expect that, you know. Yeah, but 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 I think he's intelligent about how he trains his body. I think he's mm -hmm. he trains for flexibility. He's not bulking up to be fucking huge. You know, yeah. he's being practical. And, and he's using his body in a way that, you know, he could do it a million fucking times and the body's going to be able to do it the same way as long as he trains the same way. Like, he's very, very intelligent, dude. You, you Check out his video doing um, on Celtic Workout with uh, with, with Seamus. Celtic yeah. Workout, excuse me. Yeah. Check it out on there. And, and he does it on the Celtic Workout videos on YouTube. Brian Danielson has this whole way that he prepares, that he stretches, mm -hmm. that he leverages, how his body's feeling, his nervous system. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, it's like. I, I like, I mean, and, and you know, I remember just fucking stretching, like just stretching was a big thing. Like, oh, man, if you yeah. stretch, you know, you're not going to get hurt. Meanwhile, yeah. he's like testing out his fucking nervous system and doing all this stuff mm -hmm. like very intelligent guy, man. So it, it was very believable. But but I think with Paige, I think the big situation with her, man, is that too much video games. No, they're, they're counting on her to be that person right now. They mm -hmm. need her to be that person. They need yeah. her to be that name. They need her to get them. To Mercedes Monet, and yes. I think that once, once, once they could cross that bridge, and put it on then Monet, she can kind of pump the brakes a little bit. But I mean, I mean, yo, man, I've been saying this shit for a long time, and thankfully it hasn't really happened. Preach you it, know? brother, preach it. But like Sting jumping off of balconies, player wrestling matches, all these guys do, all these older guys and all these retired hurt people coming back doing a match, doing all this stuff. Something's gonna happen to somebody. Gente. Something's gonna happen to somebody, and and I Listen. and I hope it doesn't. And the more you run the risk, yo, don't, the more it can happen. Drive to fucking Weehawken and smack you in the mouth if something happens to Sting. Now, I'm a, <laughs> hey, listen, li listen here, Anakin. I have the high ground. Okay, I live. Right. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to climb up them stairs. You'll get blown up, and I'll give you a stinger splash off the top of the steps. All right? Hold on, I, 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 I just I, I, do over here is walk. What do you mean? I thought of something for you two guys, bro. If you two guys ever do. A solo podcast and work in the marks of must lo love wrestling have to be called the ring generals. The ring generals. It would have to be called the ring general. You two are the ring generals, bro. I'm telling shit. you. <laughs> Look at Pat all modest and shit, bro. He's like, I'm not a ring general. No, dude. I'm maybe a ring, not. maybe a ring commander, not a general. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking not. I'm I'm more of a beer general these days than a fucking <laughs> ring general. Okay. I go to the dollar general. I'm not a ring yeah, general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, man. Uh I, I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna tear a quad. I'm the right? fucking oatmeal cream pie general. That's what I am right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm not yeah. I'm not trying to tear a fucking quad or a hammy or anything. I gotta I gotta I mean, go I've to work tomorrow. There there's definitely gonna be like I definitely feel like sometimes, oh man, I wish I could go back and take some bumps in a ring. I just indie rings are tough. I mean 
they don't look that bad though. I mean, I watched that. I watched that. Uh, that Netflix show, bro. You know the fucking OVW thing. The wrestlers. And look knew, at Patty. I knew you were gonna fucking. Go <laughs> and I mean, there, I saw you them. Fucking they, jerk. I knew. I you were saw gonna go them. There. I saw them building the ring, and I'm like, oh, okay, it doesn't look that bad. Oh, okay. Go take a bump then. I'm just oh, hold, on a a hold on a second. Let, let me go get my seltzer and muffins. I'll be right back. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you watched the wrestler show on Netflix? Um, I watched the first Mach- couple episodes. Yeah. I just finished it yesterday. Pat is anti. He doesn't want to watch it, bro. I don't know why, man. Why not? I don't know, man. It's a great show, man. I'm telling you, it's really great. I hope they come out with a. I hope they do a second one. I enjoyed the first couple episodes, but then it just kind of got redundant to me. I mean, I mean, Holly, what a Hollywood, that chick Hollywood, she's she's fucking awesome. Yeah, Hollywood. I really enjoyed Hollywood. I, Hollywood, I Jay. I think what happened with me was here. Here's my trying oh, to I get got, a sponsorship with S- Simple Modern. I got yeah, call give me, give me. I'm tr- I'm trying to get a sponsorship here with Spindrift. This nice. is what I think CM Punk was drinking when uh. <laughs> when he fucking when he did when he did the fucking the the, the shoot the there presser. yeah <laughs> yeah I think was. it was this I think it was Spindrift. So now Pat, what 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 is your beef with not watching the show Wrestlers on Netflix? <laughs> fucking knew you were gonna go there. It's better to go here than go on a Wednesday show. You know, come on, you you curly haired prick. <laughs> I knew you were gonna go there. Uh, here's the thing. All right, for me personally. I don't mm-hmm. like programs that reveal shit about the business. I think that shit mm-hmm. like that should not be detailed very much. It's yeah. been detailed enough. We don't need to talk about it anymore. You know what I'm saying? But everybody keeps wanting to pull back the curtain. And I mean, the curtain's go, been pulled back since the uh, steroid scandal. Not all the way. Mm-hmm. Not all the way. There's a lot of things that fucking fans and marks don't know that they haven't learned from books. Or shoot interviews or YouTube videos or Google searches or whatever the fuck they do. Mm-hmm. Patreon subscriptions, whatever, bro. <laughs> whatever you whatever whatever you want to say. There's a lot of shit that fans still don't know. Mm-hmm. And I think that programs like that are interesting for people who don't know about the business and perhaps a more modernized take on it. But it also runs the risk of exposing the fucking business in a way. Mm-hmm. And empowering fucking idiots and marks who know very little about the business Mm -hmm. to think that they know more or have more of a say over people who actually worked in the fucking business and paid their fucking dues. And that's just me. That's just how I feel. So that's why I don't watch it. But I ain't got a a problem with anybody else watching. Great show. Great show. Fantastic. Al, Al Snow. Like, Al Snow. There we go. Al Snow. Right. Al there, Snow's bro. cool, man. And good. And good for him. And good for Al Snow. That he's on fucking TV, that he's doing his fucking thing. But me personally, I don't want to watch that shit. I don't want to watch that shit. You know? Because, again, I know I'm going to run into some fucking schmo that's going to fucking try and use shit from that to try and Mm. act like he fucking knows more than anybody. And look, I'm not saying I'm a fucking expert, bro. But, like, I think nowadays we have a general problem with people where they do not respect people who actually work in a fucking field and think that they know more than them. Agreed. Just because they did their research. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. Or See? they or they know. I know. You don't know shit. This is why you're the you ring general. This is why you guys you are the ring generals. You ain't got up and fucking done it, you fucking yep. mark. Yep. Okay? You ain't got up and done it. Do you he see just needs a beret going, right now. Look at this. He know, just needs a beret. No, no, no. No, I, no, I agree. I listen, agree with him, man. What, what do you I think? Agree. You think I'm some dude that wears fucking stupid hats on this show? Is that what you <laughs> think of me? Or put stupid shit on my head? I got to agree with you, man. I got to say it. Like That's one of the most annoying things I've ever had. There's this actually really great. Uh, I, I just I just recently made a friend uh, a friend in wrestle and like the wrestling verse. Her name's Shayna. And she tells me all the time. She's like, the one thing, the one word that I hate, she's outrage. The one thing she hates is like the word gaslighting right but she says in today's wrestling that that's what people Mm -hmm. do like you'll have a wrestling fan like somebody that's like 20 something years old right and then they'll watch like brian danielson say out of media scrum john moxley you'd have to argue he's not the best wrestler in the world right now but then you'll have that 20 something year old jump on twitter and be like brian danielson's lost his mind he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about so all of his years of expertise and him telling you all the people that he's been in the ring with you know he you know triple h uh 
you know, Eddie Guerrero, Loki, all of these guys that he's been in the ring with, and he's yeah. telling you he thinks John Moxley's the top, but I'm supposed to believe you, Mr. 20 something year old, because you don't like John Moxley. You know, that's that's kind of how it happens. Like you you I'm supposed to take the advice yeah. of a 20 something year old kid over someone who's been in the business for 20 plus years. Oh, I agree with you. Exactly, man. And, and and I think it's arrogant at the very least. I mean, you don't see me showing up to fucking Newark uh, airport going, hey, listen, man, I'm going to go fly this fucking plane real quick. OK, <laughs> yeah, but you don't you're not a pilot. You don't actually work now, nah, but I'm going to fly the plane, dude. Trust me, bro. I yeah. know what I'm doing. Yeah, you don't really know this. what you're doing. I did my research. You know what I'm saying? Or me walking into <laughs> me going into into a hospital, walking into the operating table and be like, listen, let me uh, let me scrub up here and get ready, man. I'm going to do this open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, I've seen it on YouTube. Did you research? I saw it on YouTube, and I saw this documentary about open heart surgery. So, like, I'm pretty <laughs> confident that I could do it. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, like, who does that? Who do that's that's <laughs> like you walking much. That's like you walking out on a basketball court and being like, "Yo, LeBron, pass me the fucking rock." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take this game winning shot right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> but yeah, no, I agree with you. I I think it's it's like you said, it's it's super arrogant, and I don't understand why wrestling fans tend to do that. Or like you said, it's not just wrestling fans; it's anybody in any field. But getting back to that show, wrestler, like the wrestler, whatever it's called, wrestlers. I didn't really watch a lot of it. Wrestlers, I didn't really watch a lot of it. Now, I will say, I know you said you don't like when people let you peek behind the curtain a lot, but I will say that show on Stars, that's a really good produce. Like, it's a really oh good heels. Show. Yeah, if you ever watch that show, I like the way it's more so drama. Than I, I heard, is, I heard, there's a there's a rumor in AEW saying right. that they made that show for CM Punk. What? Stephen Amell, it, he, that that show's his man. I, I mean, don't know. That's he, what I heard no. from some AEW. No, they no, made that heels, that you know, show was made for Stephen Amell because Arrow ain't on fucking TV no more. All right, and he's <laughs> a he's a made. massive fan. And they took two people from two different universes and put them on the show. Together. We had him from Arrow, and then we had the other guy from Vikings. And they're both like you could tell Stephen's the guy who actually works though. Oh, but, he did. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cody Stephen had matches. Yeah, Stephen yeah. had matches. I mean. I liked his match with Cody Rhodes. I thought that was great. Yeah, I liked his match with Cody Rhodes. I liked his match with Christopher Daniels. I thought it was uh, like he worked really solid. I like, you know. Even that stooge? What stooge? Christopher Daniels a stooge. What? Oh, the Fallen Eagle? Said. You don't like <laughs> CM Punk said. <laughs> That's what oh, the AEW really guys said CM Punk said. They said they call, he called Christopher Daniels a stooge. I thought he was I, I feel I like think he was talking to Daniels. I, I feel like you get like the Alex Jones wrestling news. I, I, I'm just like hearing from what AEW guys say, bro. I'm like, I don't know, man. They're all saying that. Like, don't listen to those call idiots. Them a they're all fucking dumb. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They're they're gonna root, they're gonna run their own company into the ground. Oh, man. That's just what's gonna happen. This whole Ray Phoenix thing, like, oh, it's, fire him, fire him, man. We got another drama situation. Fire him. This is not his fault. This is the problem. How come, how come killed New Japan? Okay, but how come New Japan can allow Mercedes Monet, a veteran of the business, to ad lib, break her ankle, and tell Willow, "You're going over, you're you're winning this match." I can't, like I broke my foot, like however it happens, and she's mm -hmm. praised for it, praised. And then John Moxley gets a concussion, and then he's like, "I can't, you need to go over." He drops the title, and all of a sudden, Ray Phoenix is catching heat backstage. That come like. What happened? Because he has been gone for too. two and a half. But, but it wasn't his fault. It wasn't uh -huh. on a spot with Ray Phoenix. Like it wasn't. It wasn't the driver. It's not what the greatest fans of all time said. I don't. I, 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 I don't know. Okay, so so here here's the thing. The that move is dangerous, and they shouldn't have allowed it to be done. Kind of like the Styles clan. Period. But his, his concussion no. was confirmed to have happened in the beginning of the match. That's what they're saying. That's okay. what the. So the big okay. the, a plancha or something hit him the well, wrong so, way. Wait, wait, whether, it? whether it did or it didn't, I don't yeah. look. I don't know. I don't know the official information, but but what I will say is that that shit didn't fucking help. No, <laughs> and it didn't, and it didn't add any Twice. more years to his wrestling. Was, was it worse than Twice. what uh, Owen Hart did to Stone Cold? It was the same fucking no. thing, more or less, but twice I yeah. would say. You he know, did it like, twice, yeah. Yeah. You sure although, Moxley didn't say do it again? Did was 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 cleaner and uh, you know in a bad way. You know. Are you sure Moxley like, didn't say do it head. again? I didn't feel I'm pretty it. sure he again. did. I'm pretty sure it. he did. When, well, when the ref goes to count uh, to three, Mox's shoulder he can't pick his shoulders up, he and the ref just stopped. Yeah, that was the shit that got me. That I was Ooh. like, yo, that's fucking. Ugh. 
Wow. And then and but, then he hit it again. Yeah. See, but 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 again, look, man, I don't even blame the ref, right? I don't mm-hmm. I don't blame Phoenix. I don't blame Moxley. Moxley was was the pro in the situation trying to figure it the fuck out for everybody to get their shit together. But I blame Tony Khan and I blame the fucking structure at that company because you have a dude, a referee that's out there. You mean the 2022 Booker of the Year? Yeah, yeah. But watch we all out, know that man. that shit's fraudulent, bro. We all know that that shit's all fucking mark rated. Like, that's not that's not reality. And don't ask D if you don't want to know the answer to it. Don't ask Pat who the Booker of the Year is because he's going to piss you off then. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you who the Booker of the Year is so far. for. Who's the Booker of the Year so far? You're going to have to wait for that answer on Wednesday on this oh. week's episode of Working the Marks. <laughs> but, but, uh, <laughs> but, you know. I'm going to write that down and make sure I ask you this question. Yeah, yeah you fucking better. <laughs> Macho will be there anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But 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 see, I getting back to this situation with with uh, with Moxley and shit and Ray Phoenix. Like, okay, Ray Phoenix shouldn't catch no heat for that. Should he catch heat for maybe doing the move twice? Okay, I could see that. I could see. Well, you don't think Mox told like, him to do it twice? I get that Mox told him to do it twice, but he shouldn't have done it. Period. Okay, because the dude was concussed. He's gotta listen to the ring general about. though. He's he, the ring general. Yeah, but he could have told you that he killed John Kennedy. Would it make it fucking so? Now would it? <laughs> so like the, the 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 whole situation is is that. You know, the structure of the company put a referee like that to be in a situation where he was inexperienced to handle it. Do their Plus, referees have nobody's... in-ear pieces that they talk to them? They don't have that in their ear? The, the, the thing is, I, I don't think they have any of that. And I don't even think that they have production meetings. I don't think that they do a lot of things, dude. And I don't think, like Jade Cargill was saying how CM Punk taught her how to swing a chair. Yeah, Bro, that's management's responsibility to teach a talent, especially a talent that's never done that before. Mm-hmm. So again, you look Kudos at these issues... Punk. You look at these events, and I think it kind of piggybacks on what Mach was saying, is that the structure of the company is not going to keep it succeeding. They're going to they're gonna kill themselves. They're going to fuck themselves over because they're not fucking professional, and they don't have a structure in place to help the talent be in the right place at the right time. And but do they, the right they did thing sell well. out Wembley Stadium at 80,000, 81,000. It was 72,000. <laughs> it was 72. And look, good for them. Good for them. But, but like... That doesn't change the fact that structurally they have a lot of issues and they have a lot of unprepared talent in situations mm-hmm. that they shouldn't be in that endanger other talent from getting hurt. See, I don't what I don't well, understand is this, man. They have Arn Anderson backstage. They have Jeff Jarrett. They have a bunch of great old school wrestlers. Why don't they have them fucking, you know, be the they backstage? They don't pay them to do that. They no? don't pay them hey, to do that. Wrestlers I, ain't going to do the, nothing that the ain't Jake paid the for. Snake story. Tell the Yo, Jake, Jake the Snake Jake story. Roberts. Now, look. Jake Roberts, I got a lot of respect for him, and I'm not saying anything about about him being disparaging in any kind of like I'm not disparaging him in any kind of way. I'm not saying anything fucked up about Jake. I respect him. Yeah. No, but, but it's pertinent to this story because of his question, correct why these guys won't help. Correct. Him. Correct. But but Jake Jake was at a show that I was at, and they were asking Jake to like go and talk to some young guy and do all this shit. And Jake was like, "You got any money?" And they were like, "What?" The promoter was like, "Nah, man. You know, could you get?" He's like, "Nah, man. You got to pay me for some shit like that, man. I'm here to wrestle." Mm-hmm. I'm not here to mentor people. Oh shit! I'll do it if you pay me. And then I guess he ended up paying him because he was over there and he was talking to the fucking kid. <laughs> so, so you know, I mean, look, man, like wrestlers ain't gonna do shit like that for free, bro. I'm sorry. No. Like, if you're contracted there to be a manager, if you're contracted there to be an announcer, nobody's gonna say, "Hey, go take this kid under his, under your wing, motherfucker." Like I'm getting paid to do something else. I'm gonna go outside and twiddle my thumbs. I'm going to go fucking eat. I'm going to go do something yep. else. I'm going to go hang yeah. out with my friends. So it was a business. All right, yeah. Gotcha. And, and again, I just think that that kind of culture doesn't even really exist very much in AEW based on a lot of things that have happened in mm-hmm. subsequent years. You know? 100%. Yeah, man. So, so I mean, we, need, look, we need more wrestlers like CM Punk to just put people under their wing and teach them. I think there's people that are doing it. I think Danielson's doing it. I think Moxley. I think those guys, Claudio, you know, like. You know, I got to give Wheeler Yuta credit. You know, like he's trying to do yeah. his thing. You know, he's he's, he's starting trying. to like add a little size to him. What, what about know? that Puerto Rican wrestler, bro? Uh, what's his name? Eddie Kingston. He's awesome. What do you mean? <laughs> what's wrong with him? <laughs> I'm just being a dick, why, dude. Why are you acting like he's like like he's acting like he's like some new hot rookie on the scene? <laughs> you <know? laughs> what do you mean? He's doing great. He's Go gonna do Eddie. better for Ring of Honor than fucking Cesaro did because Cesaro yeah. has no personality. <laughs> oh shit, dude. It kind of sucks, right? It kind of. Eddie su- Kingston's I, the Ring of Honor World Champion. He's already the best world champion in the company. I said what I, I said. I think that's. Oh no, no, Ooh, you that's said a fucking damn. 
I agree with it. I agree with it. But but I think... name one thing MJF does better. <laughs> Ooh, you're gonna have heat, bro, on your next show. Heat. I don't know, bro. I I I. I'm trying to think objectively. Like I'm I'm not even trying to like throw anything into this, but I mean aesthetically, maybe you know he's got a better look. MJF. Yeah, really? he's not a kid. He's not a kid. Don't call him kid. Wearing, wearing 1960s platform shoes to the ring makes you more aesthetically more pleasing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, man. A lot of people don't see that shit. A lot of people okay. don't see those lifts, bro. I never like, noticed bro. that. I didn't bro. notice that. Like he's, <laughs> he's got these, bro. He's got these mega lifts, yo, MJF. MJF but maybe that, maybe that's Adam just a Cole, gimmick with Adam schools. Cole. That's his gimmick. No, with no, 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 no. That's no. just lift something brothers. the wrestlers are told. Short wrestlers are told to do that shit when you're fucking training, okay? When me and my cousin got into the business, you know, they were telling us, yo, you guys are going to get boots because we started wrestling in Magnum boots, like those Magnum yeah. combat boots. Oh, shit. Was, yeah, yeah, you remember. You got a pair, too. Yeah. We we all we all used to wear the Magnum Combat boots, yo. Like Scott Hall would wear them, Steve Austin would wear them, like uh, Just Incredible. Like a lot of wrestlers would like wear them in like segments and vignettes and all this shit. You know, wrestling them. Yeah. So they were great because they were light. They supported your ankle. They were fucking good, you know. Um, but then I remember like after a while, like, hey, you know, you've been wearing those fucking boots long enough. You know, you're gonna get real boots. And then it was just like, okay, it's like be sure to get lifts. And it's like, why? It's like you're short. <laughs> it's just like oh, okay. Shit. So yeah, so straight up, and and even guys shorter than me and my cousin, they had lifts, you know. Unless it was the guys who were wearing the wrestling shoes and the kick pads, but there was That's very few guys too, like that Pat, back then. You're like you, you're a lot. Uh, I don't know. You're kind of like Eddie in the way that like Eddie carried himself bigger. You know what I mean? He was he wasn't super tall, but he carried himself bigger, so he was able to work bigger guys. Like now, Macho? Eddie, though, Eddie though is really small, so yeah, that's that's different. No, I mean, <laughs> oh goddamn! Anytime I hear that name, um, uh, that, that's that, what we used that... to call. That's what we used to call uh, Bernie back in the day, Eddie That that means like like little man. <laughs> no, that means that mean no. It was his dad saying Jesus. his name. Oh Anyways. yeah, Eddie though. Anyways, this is, this is Violet. This is Violet. Ah, you, you oh, hello, Violet. She don't she don't put claws on you, man. My cat puts hello, claws Violet. on me. Get the fuck off the computer. Oh, there we go. See, at least I don't have the only problem with that. Look, look, Macha's always coming on here working fucking stiff, bro. Always. If it, if it ain't about somebody else, <laughs> Yo. it's about the professor. Yo. You're always working stiff about the professor. Yo, and you know man. what's funny? I had to tell though. D today. I had to I had to tell D today that I don't even know the professor. <laughs> I thought he knew him, bro. I was like, oh, man, I was telling him how the professor gets away with wearing cowboy gear at Giant Stadium. He's like, I don't even know this guy. And I'm like, what? Like, Damn. I was like, I don't know this guy. I met him one time. And I thought he was all cool. But now, you know, that's fine. He seems, well, you he gave, seems you gave cool. him a nickname. It's Umberto. That's Umberto. It, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he reminds me of that guy that works for uh, the Hollywood Reporter. Uh, Umberto Gonz- uh El Mayimbe is what they call him. He, does, he breaks all the news for like su- uh, superhero news and stuff. He looks just like him. Nice. Mach, yeah. I, I got a question for you here, okay? Yeah, let's do uh, it. Not non-wrestling related, fantasy football related here. <laughs> all right, so I got T. Higgins going tomorrow for Cincy, mm. right? Uh, and then in my flex, I got Puka Nakua, but on my bench, I got Rashad White. But Rashad White's taking on Philly. And they're at home. But I don't know. Should I put Puka Nakua? Because it all depends on if Joe Burrow's playing or not. You know, because well, I would play. Right? I would put Puka in. I would put Puka in uh, at wide receiver, and then put Rashad at wide in receiver, flex. and then I would put Rashad in. Yeah, because yeah, yeah unless they're on a roll it, right now. Yeah, yeah. But but the good thing is is that that Rashad's playing tomorrow night. So all three of those guys are playing tomorrow night. But I got to bench one of them. And I don't know, man. I just think if Burrow doesn't play, T. Higgins ain't going to put up no points. Folks, if you're interested interested in fantasy football, <laughs> you can message this chat as well. Yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think or that's you my can move. follow along with my new podcast, the 49er cast, that'll be oh, debuting yeah. next week. I want to so be on exciting. that fucker. I want to yeah, be on let's that go. fucker. Let's go. Want- let's got it. I think it would be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It would be amazing. I'm a fucking right. Look at this. We'll look, definitely look. get down in Purdy when we're talking about it. Oh, I like that. The motherfunkers that. right now. The motherfunkers are doing pretty good. Why are you on your... Yeah, 86, there you go. 86% chance of winning so far, so let's see what happens here. Let's see if the yeah, numbers hold go. up. Devontae Adams hasn't done shit since the start of the third quarter, although I think Jimmy shit the bed. 
even though I'm quietly rooting for Jimmy, even though he's on the Raiders. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Mi gente. Mi gente. Wow, we have gone overtime. Well, I'm, sp- we? I'm splitting. I'm good. Well, whoever hears this on the audio, I'm splitting this in half. After the Rumble, it's a whole other show, bro. Cause, yeah, yeah, that's it, cool. It We're like, just ad-libbing. I like it. It seems There's like nothing it's a wrong with that. Show. No, not at all. Not at all. And I think we touched on a lot of good things. But I'm thinking um, of seriously, bro. You guys... The Ring Generals podcast, or the Ring, like whenever you guys do you know an what? episode, the Ring Generals. I we are not doing that. Absolutely not. That is that <laughs> so is modest. That's so modest, dude. No, no, man. Come on, man. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. Um, but I think we should do another turnbuckle in time, and this time we should do it with the match that the Match Man right there sent me: Reckless Youth versus Brian Danielson in the 2001 Super Eight Tournament. If it's on YouTube. A, I'll grab it, man. It's on fucking YouTube. That would be a great yeah. match to fucking put on here. I don't know if anybody owns any copyrights to anything. We might oh, even send be able me that. Send me that. Show send me it. that. Uh, send me that. That thing in um in Messenger. And that it's match. and it's it's a it's a it's a pretty historic match. I had a lot of significance, I think, in the future of wrestling, and it was, I think, a peek into the future of what wrestling could be yeah. many years later. So. Uh, that would be an awesome one, and I'm 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 a big mark for both guys. So it'd be, it'd be yeah, cool to talk you were about definitely it. a big fan of Reckless Youth when we were younger. I remember that was like your dude. Well, he was he was very much ahead of his time. You know, uh, he was a dude who could work all those international styles, could do all the fancy shit, lucha. Was he was he was he during style. the time as uh, your other boy Trent? Uh, Trent Acid. Trent Acid. Yeah. 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 Was he the yeah, same Trent time Acid as that? Dude, we that, like that was a golden acid. era. You were the only was... guy to give Trent Acid his flowers on YouTube, man. Well, I, I think there's a lot of Trent Acid fans out there, man. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think there's mm-hmm. a lot of people that saw him wrestle and saw how good he was, uh, whether it was in Jersey All Pro Wrestling. flowers, CCW, you were the only one that gave him, bro. You know? No one else well, in YouTube gave him flowers. I, I, I mean, he's got a lot of people that respect him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's got a lot of fans. So, so I, a lot I'm of sure people, a lot of people appreciate Trent Acid. He's definitely yeah. one of those guys. Like, I, I think I remember when he was. His finisher was amazing, the acid bomb. Yeah. Like the reverse, yeah. like the reverse uh um outsider's edge or whatever. And then he would he'd sit out and over. Would, yeah. He would grab the legs, you know. That was dope. Sick. That was dope. He used to do the full moon salt. He would pull down his pants mm-hmm. to like his ass, and then he would mm-hmm. just do a moon a moon salt. It was fucking hilarious. Yeah. Was it, was it so? I I saw him on uh what was that documentary? Uh match subject to change. Or card, card subject sub- card subject to change. That was Sorry. sad, man. That was sad. Very dumb. I didn't very see sad. that. I didn't that see that. Sad. I watched the Teddy Hart special. You, you know who's in that, yo? Fucking Eric, yo. Fucking Roach. Really? Fucking okay. Eric, Eric, uh, Eric Corvus. That's what he wrestles. Oh, out. I remember yeah, that guy. A, yeah, he's Corvus Fear. You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Corvus. Uh, Eric Corvus. He's in Corvus the Teddy Fear. Hart thing. Fucking Eric. No, Eric. no, no, no. You know, you know, card, Eric cards, Roach. cards, cards. Papa Roach. Change. That was he was in my Carson. class. The, 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 the class. Bro, we all trained together. We all trained together. Yeah, it's Eric, card. Eric it's called means card. card bumps one after another. I'm like gonna we, send. I'm gonna send you that link, Ma, so you can watch that shit. It's called Card Subject to Change, bro. It's basically yeah. it's, well, it's it's it's, sad. Whole, it's only based in New Jersey, though, right? New Jersey, PA. Yeah, like for that. the most part. For the most part. I mean, it's the trend acid part is really fucking sad, though. Like you know, well, he got yeah, caught up in some. Me. He got caught up in some substance abuse, right? Yeah, a lot of wrestlers yeah. did. A lot of wrestlers did that shit, man. I mean, look at Perk Angle. That's what. That's kind of what happens, man. Perk Angle, you, you saw him on. You saw him on. Uh, he's been on uh, Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah. I actually yeah. want to check that out. I'm I'm not a big Joe Rogan guy, but I definitely want to see that. You know. You know what I like the most? I I don't know if this is something that you'll appreciate, Pat, because I know you don't like this type of stuff. But what I like the most about Kurt Angle's podcast is that he is so real on it, and he's willing to tell you anything. He's only like got he- 15 inch pythons. He said now. Yeah, but dude, the way he talks, the way he like goes into certain aspects of wrestling and the way he like, like he's just open and honest, even about the Daniel Pewter situation. Like he talks about it all about his substance abuse. He tells you why, like he wasn't able to be better than he was. Everything he talks about on his podcast is really worth it. I I gotta say the, the the hardest podcast that I've ever listened to was the Charlie Haas podcast. That was Why? fucking sad because oh, they talk yeah. about Russ for about forty minutes and it's really bad. Yeah. Is, it's is it me? Is it me or is it Kurt Angle just like sunken in? Like he just yeah, look, he doesn't man, look he's... like you know Angle. He looks like <sighs> he's fucking older, dude. Oh yeah. come on! There's a lot of wrestlers out there who still have their their bulk. Yeah, you know? but he you know he probably he had to fucking slim down. 
Yeah, he man. wasn't a he wasn't a steroid guy though. He was a guy who he was that way because of collegiate wrestling. His body had to be a certain way because of. I mean, he, I don't know. He, if, I don't he, know. Might, he might he might he might have been a steroid guy. He might have been a steroid guy. I mean, maybe maybe, little but bit. I don't know. I mean, I bit. didn't always assume little so. Bit. Maybe little maybe bit. a little bit. Maybe little bit. Little you bit. know, I get it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I get it. Maybe, nah, he maybe he he was you know, you know he was in great shape because of, because of amateur wrestling for sure mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying he definitely had a lot of size a lot of bulk but he did bulk up and i think he kept himself bigger mm-hmm. you know around that time like bro you look at triple h like 2000 bro <laughs> fucking animal mm-hmm. animal and yo and i thought he was big like still like 2011 2012 but bro Oh my god, he's a but fucking bro. Baby. He's got different body types for every era he worked in. Yeah, like he looked yeah. like the young, he looked like the young dude in like the attitude era, the, the DX era, and then when he's the game is when he starts like getting jacked. And then by 2004, when he works like the main event at WrestleMania 20, he's starting to get like chubby, yeah. right? And then yeah. he has to wear like uh the Goldberg matches, he's like really chubby, and then by the Roman Reigns match, he's like thin. He's all like, uh, like leaned out and stuff, and you could tell he kind of takes care of himself now. But I mean, I don't know. He's got that book if you ever want to. No, no, no. He's he's his his, his he's training really book big was really into good. Nutri- yeah, nutrition, all that. So stuff. he didn't yeah. he didn't drink or do drugs. Do you think he was on the juice? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Come but on. that's not a drug to these bodybuilders. That's, but a lot, that's a necessity. Yeah, a lot of those guys were gassed up back then, though. That was the era of the All right. So, so Eric Bischoff on, on a podcast, I can't remember which one it was. They talk about steroids, and they talk about people failing the steroid test in WCW. And he mentioned, he said, that wrestling is an entertainment business. You don't go suspend Chris Hemsworth for looking the way he does doing Thor. So why yeah. do you come in here and suspend Hulk Hogan for doing this? It's the this truth. isn't a sport. It's entertainment. Well, so I, I wanted to get your take on why do you sure, think that that, sure. that is? Well, I think because it's the legal consequences of them trafficking fucking steroids and doing mm-hmm. it in a way that's not through, you know, a doctor doing it properly. You know what I'm saying? I think if they can get it through a doctor, you got a prescription for it, then that's fine. But if you don't have a prescription for it and some fucking dude who looks like a shittier version of you is fucking selling it to you. <laughs> you know, like it, it looks fucking shady. It mm-hmm. looks shady. And now now you have a traffic a drug trafficking ring that's going on within a wrestling company. That's mm-hmm. illegal. You know what I'm saying? That's illegal. I mean, I guess when what in the eighties steroids wasn't illegal, they didn't give a shit. Yeah. Man, yeah I guess look not. at some of those guys. But by ninety two, well, you could tell the guys that were off the juice. Like we just watched it in the room. Oh, yeah. You could see the guys that didn't look the same. Well, Sean, Sean was like chubby back then in '92. Was he juiced? Sean was like, Sean? He, was like, he was like chubby, bulky. I don't know if Sean juiced, man, because I kind of feel he, like maybe he in '97 denies he might have... it even now. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. look like it. He doesn't even look like he really went to the gym that much. He was just naturally he the way had, he is. He biceps. He had like a wide back. You know what I'm saying? Um, he was in shape. Look at that. There he is. D. That's his, that's the he was suspended for steroids. <laughs> But he was, he yeah, but it was because of his piss. That, yeah, he denies yeah. that it happened. And the thing is, the only time he was ever like ju- like leaned out like that, like big, was for '96. Yeah, like n- like he wasn't. You're right. In '95, he was still kind of like chubby. Sean WrestleMania '11, '97. Like no, chubby. bro, you look at him. You look at him going into WrestleMania 14, bro. He was fucking big, bro. Yeah, he was big. He has you, some you, size on. But him. you're telling me the Rock ain't on the juice? Come on, man. That dude's we don't know. Nice. We can't tell because of his boobs. You can always tell. Like Montez Ford, you could tell he just came off the juice. You can tell. Because yeah. of like where, you know. The but Rock, like, though. You can't the tell Rock's the like rock. mega rich. He could get a prescription, bro. He could do all that shit. And yeah. Bro, he's 50. And look at the way he fucking looks, bro. Come on. He looked like he could get back in the ring right now. Like his fucking bananas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's crazy. Yo. Why, why do I look like Pedro Pascal playing a, a part that Johnny Depp should be playing? <laughs> <laughs> or like, why do I look like like Johnny Depp playing like some part where like he's got to gain some weight and like have this this fucking baby ferret hairdo that I got going on right now? You got a nice head of hair, bro. You got some good hair. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. I look like a baby ferret right now. It's, it's in the growing phase, you know. But that's what it looks like. I feel like it looks shady right now. I I, I forget how I look like I'm in, like, like, like I'm in this season of Narcos or some shit. <laughs> it's all good. 
I'm going to play the cousin. Well, anyways, listen, I got to get the fuck out of here. Oh, yeah. Right? I got fantasy football match. Yeah, I gotta call got you. work at four o'clock in the morning. So you got work at four. I ain't calling you. You can fucking go to sleep. Better let me in. But, yeah. but D, hey, you, you, you it's know, been the a pleasure gimmick, having you. Brad, you gotta Folks. see the gimmick going on, man. You always get the gimmick going. Yeah, I gotta you. keep the gimmick going on. I will, but I just gotta, you know, do the other gimmick. Like, you know, oh, check you out go. Must Love Wrestling Podcast. Is that it? Must Love or Must Watch? Yeah, Must Love. Must Love Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and D, check out In the Dungeon with Stu Hart with D. <laughs> and um, don't forget to check out Work in the Marks. He is D Rotten. He is Macho Rodriguez. I am Patty Jr. Rican. And every week, whether it's in Turnbuckle or Time or Wednesday nights when somebody else doesn't show up, we are working the marks. Take it easy. Have a great night. Peace. See ya. FAMCAST MEDIA